أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Our praise is due to Allah We seek His guidance and His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the whispering of our desires. Whom Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whom He allows to be misled, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone having no partners and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His slave and His messenger and His perfect worshiper. It is narrated to us from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu in a hadith that is collected by Muslim that while he was sitting with the Prophet wasallam on a particular day, a man came to him whose clothes were exceedingly white, his hair was exceedingly black. There was no sign of travel on him, and at the same time none of the companions recognized him. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he says, بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم اطلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد. No one of the companions recognized him Hatta jalasa عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Until he placed his knees at the knees of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه And he placed his hands upon his own thighs And then he said Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Al-Islam أن تشهد لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him, Islam is that you testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his slave and his messenger, and that you establish the prayer, and that you give the charity, zakah, and that you fast the month of Ramadan, and that you perform the pilgrimage to the house of Allah عز وجل in Mecca if you have the ability to do so. Then he said, Sadaqt, you have spoken the truth. Umar comments on this conversation saying, so we were amazed that he asked him and then he confirmed that he gave the right answer. And then he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ iman Tell me about iman. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Al-Iman, أَن تُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ Iman is that you believe in Allah وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ And His angels وَكُتُبِهِ And His books وَرُسُلِهِ And His messengers وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And the last day, وَتُؤْمِنُ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ And that you believe in Al-Qadr, destiny, divine decree. The good of it and the bad of it. قَالَ صَدَقْتِ He said, you have spoken the truth. The hadith continues. But I wanted to highlight today in this khutbah a particular part of this hadith, of this conversation. And that is where the man asked Rasulullah wasallam, tell me about Iman. Tell me what Iman is. Because this hadith, this conversation that happened between the man who later on in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ reveals his identity as being Jibreel. And it's a hadith that all of you know. It is one of the most famous hadith in Islam. And the scholars of Islam counted this hadith as being one of the greatest, if not the greatest hadith of Islam. Because at the conclusion of the conversation, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, that a Jibreel, that was Jibreel, atakum yu'allimukum deenakum. He came to teach you your religion. Meaning that the entire religion can be restricted or it can be taught in the conversation that happens between Jibreel and Rasulullah Sallallahu in this hadith. Islam revolves around the conversation that happened in this hadith. The person who understands this hadith understands 
or can come to understand the religion of Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ, he answered Jibreel when he said, tell me about Iman. He said, to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the day of judgment and divine decree. And my experience has been, when uh, people have come to ask about Islam, my experience has overwhelmingly been that when I speak to them with regards to, and I limit the conversation to these points that are mentioned, I don't need to speak with a person who's interested about Islam about the obligation of hijab. And I don't need to speak to them with regards to secondary issues. I simply speak to them according to and follow the guidelines of this conversation. And overwhelmingly I have found that most of the time, by the fadl of Allah Azza wa Jal, that when you restrict it to these points, by the end of the conversation they are willing to accept Islam. Because the Prophet Wasallam he shows that this these points, these few points, even though it is a, it's a concise conversation, that it is sufficient to deliver the message of Islam. So simply speaking about the pillars of Iman and the pillars of Islam, the arkan of, of, of belief and the arkan of action, the, the pillars of faith and the pillars of action is sufficient for uh, spreading and sharing the message of Islam. So I wanted to focus on one of these pillars today as the point of the khutbah. The first is to believe in Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, and tu'min billah, that you believe in Allah. And I like to begin by saying that one of the things that differentiates our belief in Allah, our belief in God, from other beliefs is that we believe in a perfect God. Allah Azza wa is perfect in every way. He's perfect in His knowledge. He's perfect in His wisdom. He's perfect in His strength and in His ability. He is perfect in His mercy. Allah Azza wa is perfect in every way. So Allah Azza wa when we speak about His knowledge, we say that Allah Azza wa does not forget. And nothing is unknown to Allah. Allah says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ To Him belong the keys of the unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ None know it except for Him. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ Allah knows what is in the land and He knows what, in the sea, what is in the sea. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا And there is not a leaf that falls anywhere except that He is aware of it, except that He knows it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ And not a grain of sand that moves in any of the deep, dark, remote places of this earth. وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ It is all in a recorded book. Everything is recorded by Allah Azza wa His knowledge is perfect. The scholars they say about Allah, لَا يَعْلَمُ مَا كَانَ وَمَا يَكُونُ وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونُ Allah knows what has happened. He knows all of the past. Allah Azza wa knows ma yakun. He knows what is in the future. And Allah Azza wa knows what didn't happen. If it happened, how it would happen. So if you weren't born to the parents that you were born to, if you were not born in the year that you were born, if you were not to uh, the race that you are, if you were not the gender that you are, if you never chose the university that you decided to attend, if your parents never decided to meet and they decided to marry other spouses, Allah Azza wa knows how all of these factors would have affected your life. All of those combinations, Allah Azza wa knows them. His knowledge is beyond our understanding, it is beyond our capability. He is perfect in every way. We worship Him alone. You ask them, does that make sense? They'll say yes, that Allah Azza wa is one. There's no, there's no two, there's no three, because then there would be conflict on earth. Does that make sense? They'll say yes. طيب. So then we believe that Allah Azza wa being that He is perfect, he sent revelation. He did not leave us completely unguided. He did not leave us and He did not create us for no reason. He doesn't do anything for no reason. So Allah Azza wa created us and Allah Azza wa sent revelation to show us how to worship Him. Because a person can logically come to the understanding <coughs> that Allah exists by the very nature that you exist. You know that nothing exists without a causer and so Allah Azza wa must exist. There must be someone that created you. The Bedouin Arab was asked, how did you come to know that your Lord existed? You can imagine the most uneducated person, a person who simply grew up and tends to their sheep and their flock in the desert. Not even that much human interaction for them to learn from. <coughs> when he was asked, how did you come to know of the existence of your Lord? <coughs> the Bedouin, he responded by saying, إِنَّ الْبَعْرَ لَتَدُلُّ عَلَى الْبَعِيرِ وَإِنَّ أَثَرَ الْأَقْدَامِ لَتَدُلُّ عَلَى الْمَسِيرِ when I see camel droppings on, this, on the road, that indicates to me that my, my, my animal has walked by. And when I see footprints in the sand, that indicates to me that a person has walked by. 
فَسَمَاءٍ ذَاتِ أَبْرَاجِ So a heaven that is raised without pillars. وَأَرْضِ ذَاتِ فِجَاجِ And an earth that is filled with valleys and crevices. وَبِحَارٌ ذَاتِ أَمْوَاجِ And an ocean that is filled with waves upon waves. Does that not all indicate the Latif al-Khabir? أَلَا يَدُلُّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّطِيفِ الْخَبِيرِ Does that not all indicate that Allah Azza wa Jal exists? All of this that is on earth, does that not all indicate that Allah Azza wa Jal exists? So, when you come to the conclusion that God exists, what is the nature of this God? Well, you won't be able to know what the nature of God is until He tells you. And so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to mankind revelation. And of them, the ones that we know, of their names, is the Torah that was given to Moses. And the Psalms that were given to, to David, as Zabur. And the Gospels that were given to Isa alayhi salam. And the final revelation, the Qur'an. The final revelation, the Qur'an. A person once said <coughs> that the way that I knew that the Qur'an was the truth is that every book that I've ever read in my life, the author begins apologizing. The author begins apologizing, saying, uh, I'm sorry for any shortcomings in this book. I'm sorry for any mistakes. Hopefully in the future this will advance the, the, this particular science and people will be able to build upon this, this, this. They apologize for their shortcomings. He said, I opened up the Quran and I found the first verse was, Alif la mim, thalik al kitab la rayba fi. Alif la mim, this is the book, there's no doubt in it. He said, I thought to myself, what kind of author would begin a book saying that there's no doubt in this book? Either complete arrogance or complete truth. One of the two. So he said, I believe that it came from Allah Azza wa Jal. I believe that it came from Allah Azza wa Jal. We believe that the final revelation is the Qur'an and that the Qur'an was given as the final revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu and an everlasting miracle. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, every messenger was given a, a miracle that was a sign for which the people believed in him. And what I have been given is wahi. What I have been given is revelation. So I hope to have the largest number of followers on the Day of Judgment. I remember... Uh, when I was a kid, I used to wonder how come the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't have a revelation that was something like magnificent, like splitting the moon, or sorry, splitting the sea, or raising the dead, or any of these things. But later on, you learn that actually the Quran is a greater miracle than all of these things. Why? Because all of those other miracles are limited uh, by time and space factor, meaning that the person, the only people who witness the splitting of of the sea, are the people of Bani Israel who were with Musa at that time. The only people who witnessed Isa alayhi salam raising the dead were the people from Bani Israel who were with Isa alayhi salam at the time when he brought him forth from the dead. However, who are the ones who can witness the Qur'an? It isn't simply the Sahaba, but it is literally every generation of mankind after the Prophet wasallam has been given the opportunity to witness the miracle of Muhammad wasallam. Or rather, to witness the miracle that was given to the Prophet ﷺ. It is an everlasting miracle. It is the most witnessed miracle of all of the Prophets. And as such, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, What I have been given is wahi, so I hope it is revelation. So I hope to have the largest number of followers on the Day of Judgment. So we believe that Allah Azawajal sent revelation to teach us how to live the best possible lives. Brothers, continue to move forward. Continue to make space. <coughs> If you were to ask someone, how many of you would like to live the best possible life? It doesn't matter whether the crowd is Muslim or whether the crowd is non-Muslim. The vast, vast majority uh, will raise their hands and they will say they want to live the best possible life. So we say, okay, then this is very, very simple. If you want to live the best possible life, that means that you have to make the best possible decisions. Right or wrong? Yes, you have to, to, make, to live the best possible life that any one of us can live. It means that we have to make the best possible decisions in every instance. Okay, so for you to make the best possible decisions, what would you do? So say for example, a person is given uh, $10,000 to buy a car. But that person does not know anything about cars. And you ask that person, what would they do? The first thing that they will tell you is they will say, I will call so and so. And they'll mention some random person. And then you say to them, well, why would you call so-and-so? Why did you specify this person out of everyone in the world that you know? They will say, most likely, the first time, that so-and-so knows about cars. They have knowledge. So we all then recognize that the first ingredient for making the best possible decision, which will lead you to living the best possible life, is knowledge. 
But knowledge isn't everything. You need more than simply knowledge. Because a person can have knowledge and they can tell you that the best car on the market for $10,000 is such and such. So you go and you buy that car. And then the second day you go and you crash that car. Because the kid is 16 years old and they just got their license last week. So there's something that is needed that is more than knowledge to make the best possible decision. And that is what we call wisdom. Because wisdom, if they had asked someone who had knowledge and wisdom, that person would have said, you know what, the best car on the market really is that car. But it's not the best car on the market for you. Because you're a new driver. And so a better decision for you would be to buy a car that is cheaper, for example, so that when you do get into an accident with it, it's, it's strong or a dent won't make it look that bad anyway or such and such until you, until you get used to driving and then you can go ahead and buy a new car. This is called wisdom. So for a person to make the best possible decision on any particular topic, then they should refer back to the one who has not only the most knowledge on the topic, but also the most wisdom. So we say, when Allah Azza wa Jal placed us on this earth, He did not simply place us on this earth for no reason, <coughs> and He did not give us no manual. Allah Azza wa Jal placed us on this earth, and He gave us the opportunity to live the best possible life by giving us access to Him to refer back to Him on every aspect of our lives. And when we refer back to Allah in every aspect of our life, then we are living the best possible lives that we can live because we are referring back to the one who has the most knowledge and the one who has the most wisdom. And so when you ask me about hijab, or you ask me about not drinking alcohol, or you ask me about not eating pork, or you ask me about any of the laws, any of the regulations, any of the restrictions, or any of the things, the concessions that are given in Islam, I say that it is facilitating for us the best possible life because it is coming from the one who has the most knowledge and the one who has the most wisdom. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tazim kathira The next is he says Wan tu'min bi rusulih And that you believe in his That you believe in his messengers And we believe that the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal And his prophets are the best of the people We declare themselves to be innocent We declare them to be innocent of Of uh, any major sins that are attributed to them <coughs> Like what is attributed to them in other books And we say that they are the best of the people To live the face of this earth the messengers of Allah and that the first of them the first of the prophets is Adam alayhi salam and the last of them is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to disbelieve in one of them is to disbelieve in all of them Allah azza wa says kadhaba qawmun nuh al mursalin that the people of nuh disbelieved in the rusul they disbelieved in all of the messengers and then the question that comes to mind is well how did the people of nuh disbelieve in all of the messengers when nuh was the first messenger sent to mankind in the first place and the way to resolve that is they disbelieved in Nuh and to disbelieve in one messenger is to disbelieve in all of them. And so we believe in all of the messengers of Allah Azza wa And we love and we respect and we revere all of them. And I want to point out uh, just one thing which is a sensitivity that we don't have or that we don't pay attention to sometimes. And that is that when the Prophet Sallallahu is insulted you'll find that the Muslim Ummah will turn everything on its head. In defense of the Prophet ﷺ, people will become angry, people will become infuriated, people will be hurt, people will be insulted because of the insult towards the Prophet ﷺ. However, when someone else other than the Prophet ﷺ is insulted, you'll find that people do not become as upset and do not become offended. So when a person is watching TV and you find that people are mi mimicking Isa ﷺ, they're mimicking uh, Jesus on TV, as a Muslim, you, some of us are not really offended. Because they're not insulting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They're not insulting my prophet. But Isa alayhi salam is my prophet. And Isa alayhi salam is your prophet. And so you should be sensitive to the mockery of any prophet of Allah azza wa Whether it is Isa alayhi salam or whether it is Musa or anyone else that has been confirmed. 
And so this is a sensitivity that I hope inshallah ta'ala that we have as well as we develop. Undoubtedly the Prophet sallallahu is the most beloved to us and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said La The Prophet sallallahu said that none of you will truly believe until I become more beloved to him than his parents and his children and all of mankind. So the Prophet ﷺ must become more beloved to us than everyone on this earth. However, the other Prophets as well have their respect and the other Prophets as well have their honor and their dignity and we are the Ummah that they will call on the Day of Judgment to testify for them and bear witness that they gave the message and they are our Prophets before anyone else. That you believe in, the Prophet ﷺ says that you believe in the Day of Judgment. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَتُؤْمِنْ uh, that you believe in the day of judgment. And we said before at the beginning that Allah Azza wa is perfect in every way. So the day of judgment is a manifestation of Allah Azza wa justice. If Allah Azza wa is just, if God is just, then there must be a day of judgment. There must be a day of judgment. And this is something that's very clear. If there is no day of judgment, then that means that the person, you can take any one of the villains of history, the ones who cause bloodshed, the ones who cause disaster, the ones who caused corruption, the one who usurped the, the property of others, the ones who robbed nations, the ones who uh, caused death and devastation and disease, those people, if there is no day of judgment, and they simply died, and their victims simply died, then there is no justice. And this is a concept that even a, a, a two-year-old child will understand. If you have a two-year-old in your house and they're running in, in, the, in the living room, and then they hit their head on a carpet, or they trip on the carpet and they hit their head on a, on a table. And no matter how much you pick them up and you tap their shoulder, they will continue to cry. Until you do what? Until you go, bad table. And then all of a sudden, in their infancy, they recognize that the table has been hit, just like the table hit them, and justice has been served. And then they quiet down. Allah Azza wa says, أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Allah says, shall we make those who are the Muslims like the criminals, how is it that you judge? What kind of judgment is that? They are not the same. And they will not be equal in the sight of Allah Azza wa The one who fulfills their life's purpose of worshipping Allah. <coughs> and follows the goodness that Allah Azza wa has prescribed for him. And the one <coughs> who lives worshipping everyone else. Worshipping their desires. Or worshipping other than Allah Azza wa How are they the same? They are not the same. And so, if Allah is just, if God is just, then there must be a day of judgment, a day in which the good will be resurrected. The oppressors will be resurrected, and the oppressed will be resurrected, and they will be judged, finally, by a perfect judge, in a divine tribunal, in which there will be no oppression at all. Those who fulfill the purpose of their life will be rewarded with everlasting bliss in paradise. And those who turn away from that, will be punished in the hellfire to be eternally purified in the hellfire. Allah Azza wa says, تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ إِلَيْهِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً Allah says that the angels ascend to him on a day that is equal to 50,000 years. That the day of judgment is equal to 50,000 years. So what are you required to do? فَاصْبِرْ صَبْرًا جَمِيلًا So be patient. A beautiful patience. You're going to be on this earth, this temporary residence, this human experience for 50, 60, 70, 80, 20, 15 years. However long has been written for either one of us, for any one of us. فَاصْبِرْ صَبْرًا جَمِيلًا So be patient with this existence of yours. إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا They see it as being distant. وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا But we see it as being very near. We see it as being very near. Be patient. Be patient with the summertime. Be patient with a business transaction that may make you some money in the short term. Be patient with lying and cheating. Be patient with all of these things. Fasbir, sabr and jamila. Be patient, a beautiful patience. Why? Because there is a day in which we will all be standing in front of Allah Azza wa for 50,000 years. And we'll have to answer for everything. The large and the small. The seemingly insignificant. Allah says, Ahsahu Allah wa nasu. Allah says, Allah recorded it. He encompassed it. And they had forgotten it. If we were to sit and try to count our sins, the problem is, is that the majority of it we've forgotten. And we can't even calculate it to seek forgiveness for it. We've forgotten them. So Allah Azza wa says, Allah recorded it and they forgot it. And the last pillar to conclude is, وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ That you believe in destiny. 
the good of it and the bad of it. And in another narration, hilwihi wa murrih, the sweet of it and the sour of it. And qadr is a manifestation of Allah's knowledge. We already spoke about Allah's knowledge being perfect. Of the perfection of Allah's knowledge is that He knows what we are going to do. That does not mean that you are not an actor in what you do. You are an actor. You chose to come to the masjid and sit for Salat al-Jum'ah. You are choosing to be silent. You are choosing where to look and what to do with your hands and all of these things. You are choosing to do these things. And you will choose what you do after. But Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ You do not wish for anything except that Allah Azza wa Jal, His will overpowers your will. If all of us had the choice, we wouldn't die. If human beings had the choice, they wouldn't die. But the will of Allah for us to die overpowers our will. If we had complete and total will, we would never get sick. We would never be harmed. But Allah's will overpowers our will. And so, what we do is, con- is <clears throat> under the will of Allah. And when we do, and what we do is all known to Allah Azza wa Jal. 50,000 years before He created the heavens and the earth. 50,000 years before He created the heavens and the earth, Allah Azza wa knew everything that we were going to do. And He wrote everything that we were going to do. And everyone is facilitated for what they were created for. Everyone is facilitated for what they were created for. Of the people of paradise, if you want to be of the people of paradise, then do the actions of the people of paradise. It is that simple. And if a person is destined to be of the people of the hellfire, then they will simply find that they are doing the acts of the people of the hellfire. However, we are in a position right now where we can act and do that which will bring us to be the people of paradise, that which will bring us closer to paradise, that which will guide us towards paradise. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that if a person is sincere, if a person is sincere and they do the actions that are pleasing to the people of that are pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal will never forsake that person, and Allah Azza wa Jal will never betray that person, and Allah Azza wa Jal will guide that person, and Allah Azza wa Jal will bring him near to Him. The, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and I'll conclude with this in the final uh, another hadith that that complements this. Allah Azza wa Jal He says, "Man adli waliyan faqad adantu bil harb." Whoever harms a wali of mine, then I have declared war on him. Wala izal yatqarrab ilay abdi. وَمَا يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطُهُ عَلَيْهِ And my slave will not come closer to me with anything that is more beloved to me than the obligatory actions that, are, that he is commanded to do, that he or she is commanded to do. وَلَا يَزَالُ يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ That my slave will continue to come closer to me with things that are voluntary until I love him. And so if I love him, then I will be his sight with which he sees, the ear with which he hears, the hand with which he strikes, and the feet with which he moves. And if he seeks refuge in me, I will give him refuge. And if he asks of me, I will grant him. So the person who takes steps towards Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal will take steps towards him. And Allah Azza wa Jal will love them and Allah Azza wa Jal will bring them to that which is goodness. These are the six pillars of Iman. We hope that Allah Azza wa Jal benefits us with that which we have heard. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to teach us that which benefits us. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجع ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا برحمتك الرحمن الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم الحمد لله